pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, it is very humbling to come and to, and to teach, Father, your word. And, and, uh, and it, it is a, a great privilege, but it is uh, a, a great a responsibility. And, and I am uh, humbled uh, by uh, the opportunity, but I am under your authority. So, Father, uh, whatever uh, that is spoken, I pray that it is, is truly from your word. Um, you, Jesus, you pray, sanctify them in the truth, thy word is truth. Father, indeed, that you would do your good work uh, uh, in our midst uh, through the reading of your word and in the teaching of your word. So uh, please speak to us, Father, and that you would give us clear understanding. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, what we have been doing this uh, this month has been looking at what who we are as SDJCC, the San Diego Japanese Christian Church. And last month we looked at our church's mission, and this week we're going to look at our values. Um, many organizations, churches, not only have what's known as a mission statement, but they also have something what's called core values. And so we're going to look at that. So what are core values? And uh, basically, and I, I kind of bunched together some definitions that, could, that I, I, I found. The core values in a nutshell are the guiding principle, uh, principles that dictate our behavior and actions. And these values underlie our work, how we interact with each other, and which strategies we employ to fulfill our mission. So we go back to our mission, but in caring or, or, or fulfilling that mission, how are we to be? How are we to, to uh, act and, and behave in the midst of, of trying to fulfill our mission? And they are the practices we should be using every day in everything we do. Now, uh, given uh, this core values, as we get a little later looking at our church's uh, values, um, I, was, I was struggling to see you know, if it exactly met this definition and things, but we'll, 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 we'll get there, <laughs> and we'll talk about it right there. But just so that you get an understanding of what this looks like, uh, here's just, uh, I'm just picking uh, certain organizations, not because you know, I, I love them or whatever, but uh, so there's a core value statement of the Bright Horizons Family Solutions. It's a company that employs 25,000 people at more than 900 child care centers in the US and UK. And they practice what is known as the heart principle. So this is, these are their core values. Honesty, excellence, accountability, respect, teamwork. So these, again, like a mission statement, you want it to be concrete and memorable and understandable for them. This is their, their core values, that in everything they do, they are honest about it. They, they seek for excellence. They are accountable. They have a respect for uh, each other, respect for the, uh, the parents, respect for the children they take care of, and that they, they do it as a team. That's, that's, these are the things that they value. Uh, this is something I heard from a while back, and, and maybe it's something I should um, ask uh, someone like Christy. It's Christy's here, okay, because um, this is uh, one of those things from Disneyland that I heard. This is one, of, and it's fairly well known, of core values that Workers at Disney are taught the following core values, and she's nodding, so that's good. Okay, so but um, the things are, that are, are, are taught is, is, is safety, and essentially safety is number one. They said that it can't be the happiest place on earth if someone gets hurt, right? I mean, they're going to go home and limping home. That's not a happy environment, or, or they're, uh, they're hurt. Um, it, it's not good. Um, I'm going to digress just a minute for this. I had a bad, fun, funny incident uh, back when our kids were really small. We were at uh, California Adventure, and um, I, I believe it was Steven. Steven was still small. He wasn't the big kid that he is now. He was really small, and we were walking around, and, and uh, it was uh, Mr. Incredible. That's what it was. Mr. Incredible was walking around, and he didn't see Steven, so his hand, I think, went boom <laughs> and kind of nudged uh, Steven a little bit. And... Um, um, we just looked at Mr. Incredible, we were just shocked, you know, but that, that was it, you know, we're not the family that, that makes a big deal out of it or anything like that, but we thought it was kind of funny, you know, Mr. Mr. Incredible. He wasn't hurt or anything, but it just, it just was kind of funny, and I often wonder, how well can those guys see, you know, <laughs> looking through these, whatever it is they're looking through, but anyways, um, anyways, getting back to safety. So safety is the number one practice of Disneyland. 
Um, and, and that's something that they you know keep in mind, courtesy, and that's something, of course, and then show that they're to stay in character and perform whatever their role. And that doesn't mean just the, the character people, I'm sure if there are people cleaning the streets or, or they're selling, you know, they're uh, retail, whatever, whatever that role is, they are to, to maintain that responsibility and be ready at all times. And then efficiency. Apparently this used to be called capacity, but it's been changed to efficiency, which is a word that I think we can understand a little bit better. So as you can see, these core values are there to help uh, the workers or the people in the organization to, uh, to operate or to, to behave and act and practice in a certain way. And so this is an example of, of Disneyland. Now we talked about mission last week uh, for our church. SCJCC is here to share the good news that a dynamic relationship with Jesus Christ is the key to abundant living in today's word. We believe God has given us a mission to reach all people with special resources to reach Japanese-speaking and Asian American families. We want to include anyone who desires a Christian experience flavored by our unique bicultural background and invite you to continue to participate in our activities. So as we think about values, too, some of these values are already kind of mentioned in our mission statement itself. What are some things that uh, are, are important to us? And I'm going to get there in a little bit about what our leadership came up as uh, with as being uh, our values and what's, what's important for us. But going back to last uh, Sunday, too, because we want it to be, uh, of course, uh, based on what God instructs us to, to do and instructs us to be. And, and going back to the mission statement part, uh, we understand that gaining from the Great Commission is that there are some things that are uh, vital uh, for us as, a, as, as believers in Christ. Uh, Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And we talked about this, that our number one, the, the one who is in charge, the one who is the Lord over us is Jesus Christ. And we need to understand that in all that we do. Uh, go, uh, therefore, make disciples, that uh, there is an element of not just sitting down and just receiving, but this aspect of going out, that there is this aspect of reaching out. Outreach is a very important part of the Christian mission. And the idea here is to make disciples, followers of Jesus Christ. That's what we are to do. And it says make, so there is this uh, activeness that's involved there. And it says, of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. There's an important element of, of teaching, and that's why there is so much, as we see in, in, in churches, right, of Bible studies, of, of in the worship, teaching from the Bible. Uh, this is important, and it is of the whole counsel of God. It says, observe all that I commanded you, not parts of what I commanded you, all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And this is important to remember that the promises of God, that is what is important. And to understand that we are not doing this in our own strength. We have the promise that Jesus is with us and he has given us his Holy Spirit. Jesus' mission itself was such that as we looked at, he came to save, he came to give us abundant life, he came to lay down his life. And these things, are, are again, are, can become the character, the values of uh, our, our ministry, that there is this aspect, it's not keeping things to ourselves, it's not, it, there's an aspect of sacrifice or, 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 or giving that is involved here. So this morning as we think about the values, we want to look at, again, some examples within scripture. And the model that we, we come up with, of course, is often found in the book of Acts, as the church was birthed. And and, and, and looking at what Jesus has again entrusted uh, to his disciples as being important and how that was then carried out. So before Jesus left, in Acts chapter 1, we read about his ascension into heaven. Uh, Forty days uh, during, after his resurrection, for 40 days he showed shown himself to his disciples as, as the resurrected Lord and instructed them. And this is one of his last things. And he says, it says, so when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom to Israel? And again, this is an understanding of scripture and Old Testament promises. Again, they're looking at the promises of God and, and the promises that there is this restoration of the kingdom to Israel. And Jesus' response to them is, 
It is not for you to know times or epochs which the Lord Father has fixed by his own authority. First thing is really reminding them, trust in me. Okay? The timing of things, it'll come, but just trust in me. The Father knows these things. But, but this is what you need to focus on right now. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of of the earth. Here again, we are reminded, Jesus is reminding them of their responsibility as he before he said, go and make disciples of all nations. Here he is saying, be my witnesses. And he says, begin here in Jerusalem, spread out Judea, Samaria, and to the remotest parts of the earth. Uh, it kind of reminds me of, of Genesis chapter 12 when God had promised to Abraham, right, that all the nations of the world will be blessed through you. That there is this, this, this understanding of the gospel message, the, the good news of Jesus Christ. Therefore, salvation is for everyone to know, to, to, to come to know. And that is the, as we look at the book of Acts, this is basically the outline of the book of Acts. We see the witness done in Jerusalem. We see the witness done in Judea and in Samaria. And then the witness done to the Gentile world or, or the Roman world as it was known at that time. And in many ways, this is continuing even to this day. Uh, other thing, as we see the church has now been birthed on the day of Pentecost, that the Holy Spirit rains down on the 120 so believers at that time, disciples, and they're speaking in all kinds of languages of the people who are there. And there are people who are wondering, what's going on? And Peter gives that great message explaining that it is the day that the Holy Spirit that was promised from before has been uh, given to them. And then he gives the gospel message that they are to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. And it says on that day, 3,000 were added to their number. And it goes on to write, they, these people, they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone kept feeling a sense of awe and many wonders and signs were taking place to the apostles. And those who had believed were together and had all things in common. And they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them with all as anyone might have need. Day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they were taking their meals together in gladness and sincerity of heart praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day those who were being saved. So this is, we kind of comb over these verses and think about what are some of the core values, what are some of the things that we see uh, kind of being uh, birthed or, or a characteristic of the early church. These are some of the things that we see. They had a total trust in Jesus, right? When Jesus said, you... That's not your concern. My father has it under control. You go do this. And when he tells us to do things, we're to obey. But it takes total trust in Jesus. That's one of the things that we saw throughout uh, the lives of the early church. Their total trust in Jesus. Secondly, there was this component of witnessing and outreach. That they were constantly looking to share, to witness, to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Uh, there was Bible teaching. It says that they followed the apostles' uh, teachings. And basically, that's the scripture, the New Testament as we know it today. So Bible teaching was important to them. Fellowship. And when we're talking about fellowship, it is the idea of coming together for encouragement. Right? Uh, for us, you know, sometimes we tack on fellowship for anything. Donut hour on its own is not fellowship, okay? <laughs> eating donuts on its own is not fellowship, okay? When we're eating donuts and we're sharing about life together in Christ, that becomes fellowship, okay? So um, fellowship is, is the a time of encouraging one another in the Lord. Talking story of Jesus, you know, basically. Communion was a big part. When it talks about breaking of bread, that's mentioned a few times in those passages. When they came together, and yes, they came together every day, it says. So what? They did communion every day. Uh, I know someone has complained to me, we only do communion once a year a month. You know? Some churches do it every week. But communion, breaking of bread. And the other aspect of communion wasn't just like how we do it, where we have a little bread here, a little cups of grape juice, and that's communion. They shared a meal together. 
Okay, so imagine Wednesday night dinner, not just Wednesday night, but every day of the week, okay? Let's think of it that way, okay? I'm not saying that they have to do it, okay? Um, but I say that conceptually, and then as they're having that meal, sometime during the meal, you know, you, you remember and celebrate the Lord's Supper. That's kind of how it was, it was done. Um, prayer was an important part of the, of the church. It talks about they were devoted to these things. And when the word devotion is the idea of this continuation in, in, in things. Uh, spiritual gifts or the employment of spiritual gifts was very important. It talks about the wonders and the, and, and, and the uh, and, and miracles that were taking place. Now, these things are not in the power of the people who are doing them. It's based on the Holy Spirit working through these people and based on the gifts that were given. And so those are the things that were taking place. Uh, community was a very important thing for them to be together, uh, meeting regularly. Again, I mentioned daily. That was important. And praising God that all of it was, uh, was worship. It was involved. So... Okay, so those are things, and some of these things you go, okay, that's, that makes sense. Those are some of the things that we do. So as a church uh, leadership, we came together, and, and I'll show you kind of a, a little bit of the finished product a little bit after that. But uh, when we think about our values, these are the things that we uh, came up as a church leadership as being uh, very important to us. And uh, first of all, we said missional, that we are a missional. Now, what does that mean? It sounds kind of cool, but uh, what does that mean? And so uh, the idea, I believe, came, I mean, it could be taken from different, different ways, but the idea that missions, okay, and that is the idea of world evangelization or sending people out to do a missions work is an integral part of our ministry, that we value that. That's why we have our missions moments once a month. That's why we, we um, look to... Uh, you know, pray and, and send out missionaries. Uh, uh, and our particular ministry or missions has been more Japan, um, but that's not the only place, of course, that we focus. But the idea is uh, that we have this missional aspect, that we value that as a church. That's a very important component of our church. That we value that we are Bible-based. Okay? And it, again, uh, we, we put that in there strictly because we want to... Uh, you know, people ask, what is your church about oftentimes? And, you know, they go through that, or evangelical, or this, that, that. But we are a Bible-believing, Bible-based, and we want the scripture to uh, be in part of everything that we do. That's, that's the idea behind this. Another value that we came up with, multicultural. At the very least, we are bicultural, no matter what. That's, that's our history. But we believe that we are a multi. Uh, we value multiple. In other words, we value different cultures uh, as a whole. That is the thing that we're talking about. And if you look at the early church, it couldn't help but become multicultural. That is the very nature of, of uh, going, therefore, you know, to all nations. That at some place you're going to cross this bridge or this river and go into another culture. That's, that's the nature of things. Community is something that we value. Um, we often are known as a, a, a family kind of a church, but uh, uh, hopefully this is a community that, um, that others are not, um, that would want to be a part of, but we do things together, and that is very important to us. Uh, reaching out, uh, that is, uh, reaching out is not just about uh, reaching abroad, but reaching out around us, uh, caring for one another, those aspects are there. And then the lastly, it's, in ch it's, it's, saying they're spiritual. And what, why this is brought out um, is it's very easy for us to sometimes do things without understanding the spiritual component or the spiritual ish matter of, of what we're doing. Um, we're not just doing it for socializing, right? We're not just doing it um, uh, so that we can have a good time, though having a good time in itself is not bad, but we want it to be some spiritual aspect, the dimension to it, that is, that is feeding the Spirit, that is encouraging us in, in our walk with the Lord, that we're growing, right, in our knowledge and our love for God. So those are the things that we have stated as, as we value. Now, next week we're having Father's Day, so we're taking a little break from this, but on the last Sunday of this month, we're going to talk about vision, 
And all of this discussion originally came up because uh, of that question of what is the vision for our church. And then we contacted our, our conference, and our conference uh, had been saying that there is a consultant that you can work with, and his name is Buck Rogers. I thought it was great, Buck Rogers. It sounds like a you know, whatever it is, uh, space. But um, that he's a consultant, and he, he works with churches. So we, we asked him to come in, and we met with him, and he helped us to kind of go through this process. Now, one of the things that he shared with us is a thing called a vision frame. And the idea of a vision frame is that there is this frame by which to then look through to, to look at the vision for your church. And are in that frame are these things that are kind of define us as a church family. So I'm not going to go through the process by which we came to these things, but I will show you some of the things that we did come up with. So our mission, of course, we already have it. We're actually trying to tweak it. So I, since we don't have that in place yet, I'm just putting our old our current uh, uh, mission statement, and, and, uh, which I already read a little bit earlier. So that goes there. And then the values that I just mentioned right now kind of go there. The question then becomes, okay, if we are fulfilling our mission and we are doing these things based on these values, what is the outcome that we want to see? That is outcome in the members of our church and the people who come here. So these are the measures. These are the things that we hope that we see in the lives of our believers. We want to see a personal devotional life. We want to see them in, you know, worshiping the Lord. We want to see them serving. We want to see them giving and giving uh, you know, a, a generously, but giving joyfully, uh, not just about uh, money, but time and all those things, uh, witnessing and also drawing relationships, relationships within, but also within the family, all those kind of things. So. Uh, these are the things that we uh, we came up with as the measures. Now, the, this part strategy was kind of difficult, but it was very helpful in the way that we were challenged to come up with this. And, and the way that it was brought up to us was, okay, if your members only have four hours in a week, disposable hour, you know, time, four hours in a week, okay, what would you like them to be involved in, you know, within the church ministry? That, that was the question that was asked. Four hours is pretty hard because once you come to, let's say, Sunday morning, and we joke, you say, well, if they go to Wednesday night dinner, that's four hours right there. You know, but anyways, but anyways, um, so we're, we're talking about, so anyways, uh, enough talk. This is what we came up with. That, of course, worship service was the first point of contact that we, we, we felt that people should be involved. That's, that's our main community that we come together. But once they're in worship service, if there's additional time, we hope they're in some Bible study. Or you can call it fellowship group, something, even the Sunday morning Sunday school. Uh, but something additional where they are in a smaller group of, of believers studying God's word. And, and that gives for some fellowship accountability and other things like that. And then from there is that they would move into service. That they would, the things that they're learning, that they would utilize it for serving. And that serving opportunities can come in worship service, but it can come in other ways as well. So four hours is not much. That was how he, we were challenged. So I'm sure there's a lot of other things that you, you know, we could think of, but that's what we, we came up with. Is that it's the community part, the larger community part. There is the smaller kind of fellowship part. And then there's the, a serving part uh, as, as means by which that they would develop a personal devotional life and, and have worship and serving and giving, witnessing, drawing relationships. So those are the things we came. So it's in the midst of this frame as we look at these various things that we're supposed to see what the vision for our church is. Because the vision needs to be in line with these things. That's that's the way that it is presented. It's a new way for me to look at it. You know, we sometimes just look at it the mission statement, vision statement, and whatever. But I thought this was kind of neat and helpful. So that's the big question here. And I I, I, I te teasingly put it there because is CGC's vision proper or what we see? And I put question mark, question mark, and question marks to be exact. But anyways, um, you know, what what is that vision? And don't say that, I'm not saying we don't have vision, it's just we're trying to come up with something that we agree upon, right? Both English and Japanese department, there's the challenge there too, but uh, to come together 
uh, with a, a vision. A vision that is something that we can um, affirm and something that you know we can remember, right? Memorable. We want it before us all the time. So we are in the process of, 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 of doing uh, that as the church leadership. But so that's those are the values. These are the things that make up us and what we are as the SCJCC San Diego Japanese Christian Church. And once that middle is is clearly put in there, you know this is something you can put up or whatever post, and, and we can go from there. But again, as you can see on the mission side, it's kind of long. So if we can compact that as well, uh, these are the things that we're thinking about. So sorry, I felt more like a lecturer this morning. But anyways. Um, <laughs> You know, this is all about discerning what God is doing in the life of, of the church family. And, and we want to be committed to the things that he has already instructed us to do. Um, but, you know, again, at the core of all of this, and we talk about core values, but at the, of this, that ultimately we want God to receive all the glory, right? That's, that's ultimately not. But within the context, how does God receive the glory is that is fine. By being obedient to his, his his calling upon our lives. And he's given us a specific that we are to go and make disciples of all nations. And we are to teach all that he has commanded us. And we are to trust him through all this whole process. That's the thing we gotta do. And so these are the things. So anyways, get back into God's work and uh, um, and let's do his will. That's all it that comes down to. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we give you praise. Father, thank you that you are you are sovereign, you are in control, and, and you are good, and all that you do is good. Father, help us to be um, obedient and faithful uh, to you and, and what you have commanded us to, what you desire. And Father, we know your heart, your heart of love for, for the people, for the nations, that you want all people to come to the knowledge, the saving knowledge of your son, Jesus Christ. But as we're reminded, Father, the way, the vehicle in which you have designated for that to be done is through spirit-filled followers of Christ to go and, uh, and declare the good news of Jesus Christ. And so, Father, help us to be faithful to that. And, uh, Father, we also know that you want us to, uh, to, to grow in our relationship with you so that we are well-fed as we go uh, to share with other people. So uh, guide us in these things, that we would continue to grow and that we would continue to go in you. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen.